Hi, I'm Montana York, and I'm your host here at Cambridge House, and I'm joined today by the one and only Mark Yaxley, General Manager of Strategic Wealth Preservation. Mark, thank you for being here. It's uh, my pleasure to be with you, Montana. Thank you. Mark, where are you right now? Talk me, talk me through your location. I am sitting inside of uh, our gold vault here in the Cayman Islands. So it's located in Georgetown and Grand Cayman, and yeah, literally uh, right inside the vault with you live today. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'll start off with just a quick question about the bars versus coins that you have in front of you. What's the different weights, different values? Yeah, when it comes to precious metals, as you know, Montana, there's kind of a full gamut of products that are available to retail investors. Starting Generally, we say we start at one ounce. I mean, there are smaller denominations, but those are really for gifts and collectibles and things like that. So Typically, we start the conversation with one ounce. So I know we're a little bit far from the camera, but this is a one ounce gold maple leaf coin. The value today is uh, about 2000 US dollars when you factor in the premium. Um, I've also got a one ounce silver round, a little bit more affordable today. That would cost a retail investor about $28 US. So definitely more attainable if you can't uh, afford gold yet. And then we've got some bigger bars and kind of like a quick note on bars versus coins is as you ramp up in the size of investment that you're making or the, the format of the bar that you're buying, you're going to save a little bit of premium as well. So something for investors to keep in mind, but here I've got a kilo gold bar. It's about the size of an iPhone or a, maybe a Samsung. Uh, those iPhones are pretty big these days. And the uh, re retail value uh, of a, a one kilo gold bar will be about 65,000 US dollars. So those are popular amongst uh, investors who have a little bit more to, to invest in precious metals. Definitely a good way to keep down the premiums. I am now investing in contemporary art. And why? Because the dozens of billionaires and multimillionaires that I've had on this show, they do it too. I'm just following the leader. Since the mid 90s, contemporary art prices and appreciation have actually outpaced the total return of the S&P 500 by 164%. I want a piece of that action. So the way I do it is through a platform called Masterworks. They allow me to buy fractional ownership in those classic names, the multi-million dollar paintings by artists like Monet, Picasso, Andy Warhol, etc. If that painting is sold after I buy my ownership as a part owner, I get paid out on that sale. Or if I just want to liquidate my position prior to, I can do so on the Masterworks secondary market. Personally, I don't intend on that. I dollar cost average in. I intend to part cash there for the long term. If you're interested, check out masterworks.io and follow me down this path. And along those same lines, you've got a 100 ounce Royal Canadian Mint Silver Bar here on the table. That one is going to go for about 28, uh, 2800 US dollars. Again, a way to save some premium versus buying 100 of these silver rounds. You can get yourself one 100 ounce silver bar. And lastly, uh, this is a pretty big one. This is a 400 ounce gold bar. So these are the largest format of gold bars available on the market. Obviously not for every investor, but a popular choice for some <laughs> Uh, this is about $800,000 worth of gold. Uh, so obviously not a price point that everyone can attain, but uh, for those who can, it is the cheapest or most cost-effective way to get into the market. Very cool. And are these all 24 karat? Like I'm assuming that these are the best, the best quality. Yeah, generally. So 24 karat is a term used in the jewelry industry. So when you know, we're shopping for jewelry, you know, you're going like 14, 18, 24 karat. Um, in, on the precious metal side, we use the terms three nines or four nines, which means either 99.9% .9 pure or 99.9% or .9 pure. So it's really how close to 100% can we be pure? So yes, to answer your question, they are, all of these products in front of me are 24 karat or 99 plus pure. There are some exceptions. There are some products on the market that are about 92% pure. Uh, and those tend to be older gold coins that are still, you know, either being manufactured or circulated, and they cut a little bit of copper into them to make them more durable. So it's kind of an older technique, but most things are, are pure now. Very cool. Uh, and then uh, I consider myself a junior investor. What does it take to actually buy physical gold? Yeah, so there's a few questions that you need to answer and kind of prepare before you go out into the market and you know, start uh, bringing these things home with you or putting them into a storage facility like this one, the first thing that you're going to want to do is determine the amount of your investment, right? So you need to, well, 
I'll start by saying this. The most typical answer you're going to hear in the media is like allocate five to 10% of your overall portfolio in precious metals. So anybody can you know, run those numbers fairly easily. Um, but my, from my personal experience and based on data that I've seen, I think that number should be closer to about 15 or 20% to have a better hedge against uh, some of the things that we're facing these days, like inflation, geopolitical conflict, the Emergency Act in Canada was a big one recently. That's kind of got people on edge. Uh, so anyways, once you've determined what portion of your portfolio, the next question you're going to want to ask yourself is what type of metal am I going to invest in? Is it only going to be gold? Is it going to be gold and silver? Or should I also go out and get some platinum or palladium to give myself even better diversification amongst my metals portfolio? And once you've answered those two basic questions of how much and which metals, then it's time to pick up the phone or go online and start doing your research to find the most reputable dealer that you can. Because you're going to want to deal, you're not going to want to go on eBay or Alibaba. These are places where you can actually, unfortunately, run into counterfeits or you know less than uh, um, reputable dealers or sellers. It's better to go to companies that are well established. I've been selling metal for a while. You know you're going to get what you paid for, and then you can start looking at how much they're charging over the spot price and doing some comparisons on uh, on your costs. Great. And then what are some we, some of those top companies? Like, What are some ones you recommend? Well, aside from ourselves, obviously, <laughs> yeah. is, uh, we specialize in, uh, in offshore uh, okay. precious metals dealing and, and storage. So we cater to a client who is looking to move their metals away from their home. Uh, we do deliver to houses and homes, but most of our stuff is offshore. But some of the big names out there as well, you've got Kitco in Canada, you've got Silver Gold Bowl up in Canada, um, in the States, you've got Atmex, JM Bullion, SD Bullion. So there are, there are literally hundreds. Those are some of the biggest names. Those are some of the names that have been around a while. And like I said, you know, as a, as a starting point, always look for a reputable dealer because you're going to cut out a lot of, you know, potential pitfalls if, if you're dealing with a, a company that's well established. Okay. And then in regards to storage, storing the physical gold, I know that with um, banks and you know that kind of stuff, there's fees involved. Um, what kind of fees are people looking at to store their physical gold with you or with anyone? Yeah, it's a really good question. And before you even get to the cost, and I'll come back to that in a second to give people an idea of what it does cost. One thing to consider is really the security and insurance uh, so if you're storing at home, for example, one of your concerns might be security. You know, you might have teenagers or you might live in a neighborhood that's had break-ins. Um, so those are things, obviously, that people might be concerned about. And then if you consider the safe deposit box down at the bank, which is, is kind of like a traditional place that people would put uh, gold and silver if they didn't feel like they could store it at home, those safe deposit boxes are not insured. So if something does happen at the bank, you know, it could be a robbery, but often it's like an internal theft issue or they just drill out the wrong box or they lose a record or something like that. Uh, and your metals do happen to go missing. They're not going to be insured. So that's why people end up in facilities like this because they're purpose built for precious metal uh, storage. They're fully insured for their full replacement value. And, um, and, and to answer your question about cost, uh, the, the average cost for gold storage is about uh, half a percent per year of the value up to about three quarters of a percent. That's kind of the industry norm right now. Uh, it does fluctuate a little bit, but that's kind of where the industry is right now. And silver, because it's bulkier, uh, to give you an idea, this silver bar is worth just slightly more than this one ounce gold coin. So it's much, much bulkier. It takes a lot more space on the shelf. This is going to cost you in the range of about 1% of the average value per year to store it in a facility like this. Uh, great. Thank you. And then uh, where does your gold story begin, Mark? <laughs> that is a very embarrassing story, actually, Montana. <laughs> uh, but I will tell it just because you asked. And <laughs> you. Um, So I was 25 years old. This is 16 years ago. I've been doing this since 2006. Uh, Christmas 2005, my girlfriend at the time came home with a Christmas bonus, and so did I. I was working for American Apparel, which you're probably familiar with. Uh, I was in sales, wholesale for them. And I had a, my, my bonus was a $100 gift certificate to the uh, movie theater. And my girlfriend at the time was working for a precious metals dealer in Montreal. It was actually Kitco, Kitco Metals. And uh, her bonus was $6,000 cash. So obviously, I realized, you know, pretty quickly, being the smart guy that I am, that I had to change industries. And uh, I did that. I started working for Kitco a few months later and have, have stuck to it since then. Yeah. 
Great. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, and then do you have any other advice for junior investors looking to buy pre physical precious metals? Yeah, I do. I mean, I really wish uh, Montana looking back that I'd started a little bit earlier. I started investing in metal shortly after joining Kitco. So I was like in my late twenties uh, at the time I started to accumulate. I still accumulate metal to this day. I have some hidden away in the back of this vault. Uh, that's very dear to my heart and very important to my family as part of our long-term savings. So my first message to junior investors, whether you be young or whether you just haven't started yet, is just start. Uh, if you worry too much about the price or if you're overpaying or is it the right time to get into the market? Yes, those are important things to think about, but don't let it prevent you from getting started. You need to have assets like precious metals in your portfolio. And next time we speak, maybe we could do like, we can show a chart that really highlights the periods of time where gold and silver are, are so important to have in your portfolio. Think of the financial crisis, 2008. Think of the COVID crisis, 2020. Think of the war in Ukraine right now. These are all times when precious metals tend to stabilize your portfolio. They act as a really good hedge. So my, my, my core message for junior investors is really don't hesitate. If your allocation to precious metals right now is zero, that is not an allocation. You need to go out and get some precious metals in your portfolio. Um, and then, yeah, look for reputable dealers, do your homework, educate yourself, watch videos like this one, watch your other videos. I mean, it's, it's not a complicated investment. It seems like it's only for wealthy people or it's comp it, it seems overly complicated to some. That's like a mis misconception that exists, but it really is quite simple. And it's not only for wealthy people. I can tell you that. Great. Yeah, that was definitely a misconception that I had entering the industry um, is that it was extremely difficult, but it's actually proving easy and uh, definitely a valuable resource. So I'm looking forward to buying more as well. And Mark, if my viewers wanted to find more about you or more of your content, where would they find you? Yeah, sure. So our website is swpcayman.com. That's our company website, but probably the best place to find us and enjoy more content like this is on YouTube. We did a whole series called Inside the Vault which was all filmed right here in Grand Cayman. And we tackle educational issues, things that people ask about bars and coins, silver versus gold, shipping my, my stuff, traveling with it, all those questions that, you know, especially newer investors might want to learn about. It's all there in these series inside the vault. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. You're welcome, Montana. My pleasure.